Closer, boy. Yes, sir. The man I was riding with left me here. I'm looking for the Hewitt Ranch. I kind of got turned around. Oh, it's uh, just down the road a piece, a little more than a mile. The way you're going? Y yes, sir. Do you have any objections if I ride along with you? No, not at all. I'm going right past there. Take one of your reins. Just right on, boy. I'll follow. Come a long way. Never had to have a lead rope put on me yet. Yes, sir. It's been a long time since I heard a blacktail magpie. We don't have them back east. That's what it is, a black-billed magpie. You, uh, you ride all the way from the east by yourself? Wished I could have. Trains, stage, riding from Virginia City to where I met you. Well, still must have been difficult. Only trouble. People want to talk to me when I don't want to. Yes, sir. Mrs. Hewitt isn't here right now. Her and her baby and her pa are over at the Ponderosa getting ready to move to Carson City. Sam's here. Well, yeah, he's here. He... I know. I got the news. I'm Sam's brother. Where is he? Show me. Yes, sir. This way. here by his favorite tree. She got the baby to take care of, and the baby thinks to pack. Ah, see if I can help her. Mr. Cartwright, thanks for whatever's in the box. Oh, not worth mentioning. This is the fun. Uh, the fun. Uh, you dry. Uh, You're warm. And your tummy's full. Now you're just going back to sleep. We're going to a new home. I'm just about ready. I expect Jared straining at the bit. Yeah, somewhat. You want a woman to leave on time, you better start telling her the day before. <laughs> yeah, you sure do know your father. Sam was the same way. Whenever we were going to town, 
I got ready an hour before he said it was time to leave. <laughs> You know, just now I was sitting here waiting as if I expected Sam to walk in that door. Yeah. When does it stop? You bury somebody who's closer to you than your own skin. You know he's gone. You can't forget. You've been through it. I've been through it. Time helps. Time is about the only thing that does help. Well, I guess it's better to be moving clear away. It'll be good to be back in Carson City. Lots more opportunities for a growing boy than a farm. The schools are good, too. That's what I hear. I hear the schools are very good. It's a good thing to look ahead. Absolutely right. Now, what can I do to help? They're still here. Bill Hewitt. Take his life. I wish for Laurie's sake as well as his, we'd been an hour gone. You can take this. All right. Just rode in. Well? No. The operation didn't work. I wish I could say I was glad to see him. And I'd be lying if I did. You don't mean that. Makes me less than I should be. Will's kin, and he's blind, and he came home from the war that way. Four years he lived with Sam and me. Four years of fetching and carrying and doing. Well, I heard you were very kind to him. Not anymore. A body gets tired. And even if I wasn't, it's all Pa can do to take me and the baby in. Talking this way comes out I mean and spiteful. No, just... just tired and human. When I got to Virginia City, the sheriff was gone, the deputy was in court. I didn't want to wait, so... all I know was what was in the letter. Well, Hoss and I rode in a posse for four days. We didn't have... I'll be coming out in a minute. She's taken Sam's death pretty hard. I want to know where Sam was killed. How and why. Sure, I know. But... Well, what I was getting at was that... Laurie's had about all she can stand. It'd be a kindness if you wouldn't talk about it where she could hear. I expect you'll let me say hello. Sure, Will, sure. I didn't mean you couldn't. I know what you meant. See you. Ben, I'd know that voice anywhere. <laughs> Hello, Will. Hi, Lori. Are you bringing the baby over here? Sam must have been proud of this boy. It's a long ride to Carson City. We can't get started. Laurie and young Sam are coming to live with me, Will. You're welcome to come, too, if you want. Thanks. I got a job. A job? I'm a harness maker now. I, I learned it in blind school at the hospital. I met a man on the stage uh, runs a, a harness and saddle shop in Virginia City. He said he'd give me a try. I hope it works out. Thank you. Laurie? You and that boy stay well. I 
have a good trip. Ah, oh, thanks. Thanks for Take care of yourself. staying with us. We have plenty of room, you know. Thanks, Ben. I'd like that. But I've got to get to the sheriff's office in Virginia City first. Well, that could be arranged. Happened at Ravens Hill. On the west slope, about a mile short of the summit. Joe told me on the way in. He was hunting deer, camped up there. You sure he was hunting? That's what he told two of his friends he was going to do. He shot twice? Yeah. In the back. With a handgun at close range. Pockets inside out, and horse and gear gone. Everything? Whatever he took up there with him was gone. Tom Keeley, uh, J. Bar N. Hand, found Sam and brought him in. Did you tell him about the rain? Yeah, four full days of it. It's the worst we've had in years. Trails, a river of mud. Posse made a sweep of the whole country. No tracks, nothing. So you stopped looking. No, sir. Not right then, we didn't. Sheriff Coffey talked to every rancher and ranch hand within 30 miles, hoping to find someone who saw a rider leading your brother's horse away. No one saw anything. What about Keeley? We got his story in writing. And we backtracked him to see if he was telling the truth. He was. He couldn't have been within 30 miles when Sam was shot. Did he know Sam? He said not. I've asked everybody else this. Did your brother have any enemies? Not that I ever heard about. He was a good hunter. Meaning what? If Sam was hunting deer, he would have been in the lower meadows where there's sweet grass, new leaves, where the deer feed. You make sense? Where can I find this, Keeley? Try the Gold Nugget Saloon. He's been hanging around there. Sam sure told a lot of people he was going hunting. Or maybe that's what they told you. See you, Tom. Two steps coming up. Twenty paces. I remember Main Street as being wider. Yeah, they widen the sidewalks. Virginia City Bank. Yeah, right again. You got two more steps. Opera. Yeah, you got a good memory. Know this fella Keeley. Say hello to her. Here's a couple more steps. Huh. No missing that smell. Saloon's got to be close. <laughs> Old man Thompson still own the place? No, he died a couple of years ago. Found named Pat Clayton bought it from his widow. Here's the doors. Keeley? Yeah? I'm Sam Hewitt's brother. Howdy. Uh, well, what'll it be, gentlemen? Whiskey. Yeah, I'll make it two. Two whiskey. I understand it rained up there the day you found my brother. Yeah, you understand right. It come down in sheets. Before or after you found him? After. I got caught in it coming down. Must have been tracks there. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty of them. Boot prints, horse tracks. Two sets of horse tracks going away. I figure one of them sets of tracks belong to your brother's horse. Why didn't you follow the tracks to find who was on the other horse? Because I'm a ranch hand, mister. I ain't a lawman or a gunfighter. Does that answer your question? Answers one of them. I got others. Well, you ask the sheriff the rest of them. Because I told him everything I know.
Some of you know me, some don't. I got something to say to all of you. I'm Sam Hewitt's brother. The law made a try at investigating Sam's death, and then they gave up. That's the law. That's not me. I swore on my brother's grave I'd find and I'd kill the man who murdered him. And I promise you, as sure as the sun rises tomorrow, I'll find the man. I thought he was blind. He is. Now, some may remember that before the war, before I was blinded, I was a pretty good shot. And I want to show you I can track a target with my ears as well as any of you can with your eyes. Anyone standing over there, move out fast. Nothing. It's on the house. Uh, I own the place. My name's Patrick Clayton. Clayton? I believe Sam spoke of you. It's not surprising. Sam and I were good friends. He used to stop here every time he came to town. If there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. I may take you up on that. Whenever you're ready, Joe. It must be awful to be blind. Mm -hmm. Not very happy with me, are you? Two steps. Man gets mad, he turns us up. You feel it in his arm. Let me explain. Sam gave me his savings, every dime. He mortgaged his ranch to send me to St. Louis. Because of me, Laurie and the baby have to live with her pa. Now, that adds up to quite a debt. Blind or not, it wouldn't be much if I didn't try to pay it. Joe, would you answer a question for me? Yeah, go ahead. When I shot at that glass, it wasn't a close miss, was it? You missed it by a while. Well, who started to clap me? I don't know. I think it was Pat Clayton. He must have felt sorry for me. I just came from the gold nugget. We got a law against shooting up saloons in this town. Who is it? Deputy. The owner didn't seem to mind. I do. If it happens again, I'll have to lock you up. Sounds like the deputy's upset because I want Sam's killer found. I think he's upset because you're shooting at things you can't see, Well, I may be hitting an innocent bystander. You, know, you had a big posse out, miles of riding, talked to lots of people. You didn't tell me one thing. You have any idea who did it? No name. Figures to be some drifter, some hard case riding through. I don't believe that any more than I believe Sam was up there deer hunting. Nun rücken Sie doch schon raus damit, was Sie annehmen. Ich denke, Sam ist da oben raufgegangen, weil er jemand gesehen hat, den er für einen guten Freund hielt. Wie kommen Sie darauf? Zwei Kugeln im Rücken aus kurzer Entfernung. Sam hat einem Fremden nie den Rücken zugekehrt. Sie haben einen Mörder in der Stadt. Er fühlt sich sicher und schläft ruhig, weil Sie aufgehört haben, nach ihm zu suchen. Und wenn er hört, dass ich anfange, nach ihm zu suchen, dann kommt er ins Schwitzen, wird nervös und macht Fehler. Und schießt ein paar Kugeln auf Sie. Das kann auch geschehen. Aber in diesem Fall werden Sie doch herausfinden können, wer es gewesen ist. Haben Sie hier noch zu tun oder reiten wir zu Ponderosa? Ich muss woanders hin. Little Joe und ich, wir haben die ganze Gegend abgesucht. Vier Tage lang, wir haben nichts entdeckt. Und ich weiß, dass Roy Coffey und der Suchtrupp getan haben, was sie konnten. Zwei Wochen haben die fast nur im Sattel geliebt. Die trifft kein Vorwurf. Und keine Spur von Sams Pferd? Nein. Weder Geschirr noch Sattel oder sonst was. That's the part I don't swallow. I can believe a drifter could have shot Sam and stole his horse and robbed him, but... Well, I didn't find Sam for two days. You know, two hard days of riding, a man can be plumb out of the territory. Sure, but if it was a drifter going through, he'd have his own camp gear. He, he wouldn't burden himself with coffee pot and pans he didn't need. Uh, he could, could hide the camp gear. He could sink it in the lake or bury it. He could have. And he could have shot Sam's horse and left it in a canyon. He could have buried Sam, and no one would have ever known what happened. So what it all boils down to, there's a lot of questions left unanswered. I got that new strap you wanted, Mr. Hewitt. Thank you. It's on the tack room bench along with the, your bridle and the tools. I'd appreciate it if you walk me out there. Yes, sir. 
Well, you may not be able to see, but you sure do think clearly. Well, living in the dark, you have lots of time to think. Fact is, that's all you do. See what it's like to be blind? Well, well sort of. I don't know how he does it, Hoss. I mean, he's walked from the barn to the house twice. And already he knows how many steps it takes. I've paced it three times, and I can't even come close. Yeah. Well, he's had uh, quite a bit more practice than you have, nearly four years. Yeah. Hey, Hoss, is it true that if you lose your sight, your other senses become better? Yeah, that's what I hear. Hmm. Must have worked awfully hard at it. Yeah. Did you know something? What? I don't like him. I mean, I, I know I should because of what he's up against. And... And I'm ashamed of myself of it, but I just can't like him. Yeah. Yeah. Used to be one of the top hands in Nevada, Jamie. One of the best, if not the best. I never knew a man that enjoyed living more than he did. We didn't call him Will in those days. He was known as Lucky. Lucky Hewitt. Got wounded and lost his sight in the last battle of the war. Four years of darkness, and his brother found a doctor in St. Louis, gave him new hope. We had a farewell party for him right here at the house. I reckon he thought his luck was going to go back to good again. He said he'd come back to outride and out rope and out run and out dance all of us. You're not making me feel any better, Hoss. I guess I'll just have to try harder. You're in the tackle with Will. Well, I was, but but he run me out. He said he didn't need my help anymore. was too heavy for Jamie, too slow for Joe, and too light for Oz. <laughs> it could have been one of the hands. Could have. But they, uh, they walk around me like I was some kind of poison. You're pretty good at that. Only fair. Doctor had me working at it before the operation and after while the bandages were still on. The day he took the bandages off, I heard about Sam's death. I've been thinking, this, uh, Pat Clayton, didn't he used to work for one of the big mining companies? Yeah. yeah. Engineer, geologist. He, uh, quit them and then went prospecting on his own and doing assay work, mining surveys. He was appointed, uh, deputy recorder a couple of years back. And he owns the Golden Nugget? He's a busy man. He <laughs> sure is. Too busy to prospect. He uh, does a lot of grub staking. He told me he was a good friend of Sam's. Huh? Yeah, might have been. He was one of the men in the posse. He didn't tell me that. You think I'm a fool, don't you? Trying to find my brother's killer when the law couldn't. Uh -huh. I think you're bucking big odds. There's nothing new in that. When do you start the job? I don't. 
That was a lie. I told Laurie and her paw so they wouldn't have to worry about feeding me for another five or ten years. Hey, Will. Why don't you open a little leather shop? You know, you're, you're good at that. Well, we could help you get started. Thanks. I'm not holding out a tin cup. There is something you can do for me. Sure. What? I'd like to see the place where my brother died. Hey, you and Joe and Hoss have a ranch to run, but Jamie could take me up there. Well, there's nothing up there, just a clearing. Just a place where a man died. Well, tomorrow's Saturday, no school. How about first thing in the morning? Thanks, Ben. be a lot of trees around here. Well, yeah, but how... Oh, I guess you could hear the wind in them. Yeah, I can hear the wind. Did the posse camp here? No, they just looked and rode out again. Do you see any signs of where Sam did his cooking? Yeah, there's a pile of rocks over there. Somebody must have built a fire. Mr. Hewitt, all you had to do was say something, I'd have helped you. All right, do it. Here's the campfire right here. Are you looking for something? Yeah. Proof that whoever killed Sam was after more than his horse and worn out saddle. Sam was up here prospecting. Long as I can remember, he had the fever, got so bad one time, Laurie had to... She says she'd quit him unless he stuck to ranching. He tried, but most of the times he was out hunting, he was looking for gold, not venison. See, he was a careful man. Trail camp like this, he'd bury his valuables and build a cooking fire on top of them. Yeah. Yeah, here we are. Feels like Sam. His name should be on the back. Samuel Hewitt? What color is this? Yellow. Gold? Well, maybe, but I haven't seen many nuggets. Feels like gold. Placer nuggets. The rough edge is worn off in a stream. Morgan Creek's just around the hill. Uh huh? Well, now we know what Sam was after and what he found. Next thing is to. Find out who else knew about it. Do I get help? I got no objections. Yes, sir.
Uh, I think so, yeah. Watch it, you step. Mr. Clayton's in the SA office. over there playing cards. Sit down, I get us a drink. Hey, Mr. Hewitt? Uh, whiskey? Yeah. And something for my friend. Oh, uh, we got root beer or cider? Cider, please. Uh -huh. okay. Cider. There's Mr. Hewitt. There it is. Bill's on the bar. Oh, that's uh, 30 cents, sir. Yes. Oh, that's a, that's a nice nugget. Yeah, I found it. Think it's gold? Jamie says it looks like it. Sure feels like it. Can't be certain. Well, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Clayton's the one to tell you. He's in the uh, assaying business. That's so. Just might ask him. My brother Sam often came in here. When's the last time you saw him? I see now, Sam. Uh, he was in here the day he went up in the hills. More like three or four days before. Pat Clayton, Mr. Hewitt. I'm afraid the bartender made a little mistake. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the days are all alike. Uh, it's hard to keep track. Mr. Hewitt's drinks are on the house. Did I hear you say something about gold? Aye, it's gold, sure enough. Nice little nugget. You say you found it. I didn't say how. It's all in knowing where to look. Well, I'm in the market if you want to sell. I'm collecting nuggets for a watch chain. I'll remember that. This Keeley, is he here? That story he told might satisfy the law, but it don't satisfy me. I'm right here, mister. You got anything to say, say it to me. You brought my brother's body in. His pockets were turned inside out. That's right. That's the way I found him. Maybe. Anyone think to search your pockets? You call me a thief? I'm asking you a question. I don't have to answer to you. After you brought Sam's body in, did you file a claim? No. I don't know what you're getting at, mister, but if you wasn't blind, I'd break every bone in your... An honest man's not afraid to answer a question. Now stop it, both of you. I'm gonna wipe up the floor with... You go back to playing cards before we get thrown out of here. And I can tell you, Mr. Hewitt, Mr. Keeley did not file a claim. Don't tell me. Show me. You got the book. Show you. You can't read. I got a friend here who reads. Jamie? Yes, sir. So you have. This way, gentlemen. Will ain't here, but he is in town. The hostler saw him and Jamie ride by. Each entry is dated. The claims are registered in the order that they come in. No space between registrations and no blank pages. That's the law. Now, start there. That was about a, a month before Sam was... before he was found. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, the claim owner's names are in the first column. Yes, sir. Smith, Perkins. No, Keeley. Not from a month back up to yesterday. I was wrong. No hard feelings, I hope. Well, not on my part, Mr. Hewitt. Mr. McKay. Me and Laurie come back, Will. We tried the livery stable, then we just kept looking. Laurie'd like to talk to you. I'll be right out. Sure, Will. Buggy's just down the street. Mr. Clayton. I'm still here, Mr. Hewitt. Nuggets. Eleven of them. Run an essay for me. It'll take a little time. Do it. I'll be back.
steps. Will, if you don't mind, me and the boy will take a little walk. If you want us, all you gotta do is lift your hand. Fine, just fine. I didn't want a lot of folks listening. But the way I treated you at the Ponderosa, not a decent hello, or how are you, that wasn't right. Forget it, Laurie. It's wrong to blame somebody for something they can't help. It wasn't your fault that operation didn't work. Took the ranch and all your savings, that was my fault. No. Just Hewitt Luck. Hmm. You're kin, Will. And kin should look after their own. Pa and me come back to say, we'd like to have you come and live with us. I thank you, both for the thought and the offer, but I got things I got to do here. Here you are. Thank you, Will. Now, I ain't one to push, but we'll be staying over at the hotel till tomorrow, if you should change your mind. I'll come and see you as soon as I can. Jamie? Yes, sir. Sure, you didn't see Sam's name anywhere in the claim book? Well, no, sir. It is getting late, you know, and I really should be getting back to the Ponderosa. Do me a favor. Say that in front of Clayton. Yes, sir. Mr. Hewitt. I must say, you do know where to look. These assay out at 95% pure. Well, you put that in writing? Oh, I already did. The boy can read it for you if you want. No need. You've already taught me to take your word. It's uh, getting kind of late, Mr. Hewitt. We're going to get back to the Ponderosa. In a minute, Jamie. I won't hold you up much. I'm going to spend the night at the Hewitt Ranch. Alone? One place in the world where I'm really at home. I know the cabin like the palm of my hand. Uh, Mr. Hewitt, uh, here are your nuggets, sir. You probably guessed these nuggets are in the can, along with Sam's watch and papers buried beneath the ashes of his campfire. In the 
the chair. Move. You'll have to leave me. I'm lost. Turn left. Straight ahead. Sit. Pat Clayton. You knew my voice. I figured you would. I know you. You killed my brother. All I want is that can. Where is it? Your bartender spoke the truth. Sam was in the Golden Nugget the day he was shot. Where is it? He rode back with some nuggets. He got an essay from you. He filed a claim, and then he rode back to stake it out. And you followed him. It had to be you, because no one else knew what he had found. Where is it? In my bedroom. <laughs> That's too easy, blind man. How did you manage it, Mr. Clayton? Did you file Sam's claim in last year's books? Look. I don't want to hurt you. All I want is the can. Now, you give it to me, and I'll ride out and leave you alone. You'll leave me alive and able to talk to the law? I don't believe that. I'll get it out of you. If I have to break every bone in your body. Got it. <laughs> You're not as smart as your brother. Maybe I'm a little smarter. Sam's claim receipt and the essay report has your name on it. You better ride out of here, Mr. Clayton. They'll hang you high and fast. Sounds like you're going to shoot. Want me to turn my back? I want that receipt and that report, and I want them now. You tell me where you've hit them, or I'll put a bullet in your knee. Where are they? Speak up and fast. Next time it'll be an A. That dust bothers you, Mr. Clayton. You can see. Yes, I can see. It was easy to pretend I couldn't since I was blind for four years. I wanted you to feel safe, Mr. Clayton. When the sheriff's around, that badge shuts everyone up. So I came home as a blind man. No one's afraid of a blind man. Not even a killer who shoots his friend in the back. You weren't afraid of a blind man, were you, Mr. Clayton? There's a witness up there. He heard everything you said. It's Sam's fault. I offered to buy in. If he'd listened to me, none of this would have happened. It's all right. You can come down now. When I heard that gunshot, I thought for sure he'd... Well... I guess I ought to be mad at you. <laughs> I went through all that trouble to help you. You didn't even tell me you could see. I don't know. I thought about it, but I decided it was safer, you know, not telling you. Yeah. I guess I could have given it away and spoiled the whole thing. You did all right. I figured I owe you folks an explanation. I figure you're right. Come on in. Sit down. I didn't risk Jamie's life. If that's what's sticking in your craw, I wouldn't have let anything happen to him. That's very reassuring. 
You're angry at me because I played a trick on you along with everybody else. Well, we... We sort of figured you for a friend, you had. As a friend, I owed you the truth. That's right. But I owed Sam and Laurie my sight, and I owed it to them to find Sam's killer. And if that's ruffled some feelings, it's too bad. Well, all I can say is that being able to see you again sure hadn't improved your disposition none. Can you guarantee me if I'd come to Virginia City and, and everybody knew I could see that it would have ended the way it has? There's no guarantee about anything. Now, the fact is... The fact is, it worked. I found the killer. I've just come from signing Sam's claim over to his son. Well, it worked, but you could have just easily got yourself killed. Don't you remember I'm lucky? Lucky you it. I think it worked good now. Thanks, Papa. Sandor, come on. Now you stay here. time of day. Look at this house. All falling down. You do nothing. I fix harness. Now it's time to plow field. You fix harness after supper. It's too late to plow then. You know I work hard. All my life I work hard. Excuse, excuse. You think you fool me? You don't. What you try is to keep me from my son. You answer. It's truth! Yes! No! Anna. Anna. Why so much trouble, Anna? Anna! Anna! Chandor? Take it easy, take it easy. Now what is it? The fighting, the breaking, smashing everything in the house. Come on, climb aboard. Now get your arms around me. Ready? Yeah! We had a small accident. Oh, well, Chando thought there was some kind of trouble. You said that, boy? No, a little argument. Uh, the tablecloth caught on a few broken dishes, a lot of noise, but... 
Anna! Miss Kosova? Hello? Chandor told Mr. Cartwright that we were having much trouble. Oh, no, no trouble. Uh, the cloth got caught on my basket. No trouble. Chandor? Children have such vivid imaginations. Well, that's nothing serious. I wish I could say stay. Have coffee, glass of wine, but... Oh, it's all right. Thanks, just the same. You cannot blame Anna. Back in old country, her papa is shopkeeper. Mine only peasant. So much different. So Anna expect maybe castle. I try. I try hard. But it no work. Nick, Nick, not good enough, man. Oh, come on, you've had a run of bad luck. It'll change. No, it cannot. Of course it'll change. That's the nature of luck. It changes. Luck? What is this luck? Demons, witches, evil spirits. I learned this from my grandmother. Well, this is a different country, so we have different spirits. Now, you work hard, and your luck will change. No, it's truth. I'll do anything I can to help. Nobody can help. It's not worth bother. All right. That Chando was mistaken. Mr. Cartwright, if it happens again, let it go. Please. Fine. You can help. Pray for me. What are you doing? I'm looking at the flowers. You got work to do. You're supposed to speak post, go to town, buy wire. Pretty. So pretty. You come out now. You come out. Oh, come out. No, no, don't. They are so pretty. Stop talking. Go. Get on the wagon. Go. And the seed, don't forget the seed. Oh, hello, Jandor. Is your mother home? Mom went down the road to see Papa. Oh. Well. What are you making there? It's a bow. Hmm. Well, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good one. Hey, Mr. Cartwright, do you know anything about curses? Uh, what kind of curses are you talking about, young fella? You know, a curse like a witch. Miss Griggs at school says there's no such thing. What do you mean, the kind of curses that people put on other people, hmm? Yeah, that's it. Can, can someone really do it? Well, a lot of people talk about them. Few even believe in them, but uh, I think I'll go along with Miss Griggs. Oh, hello, Mrs. Kosova. Mr. Cartwright, won't you come in? Uh, Miss Kosova, I was uh, just 
passing by, and I thought, since I'm on my way to Cottesville tomorrow, and you have some friends in the Serbian community there, perhaps you and Nick would like to send a message or a letter with me. I... No, 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 thank you. Mr. Cartwright, please, sit down. Well, just for a moment. How have you been? Thank you. Mr. Cartwright, I ask you for help. Yes, of course. I want you to take my husband. Mm -hmm. Lock him up. He's not right. He has a sickness in the head. Oh, what, uh, what makes you think that? I see the signs. The flowers. He stopped work to look at the flowers. <clears throat> well, uh, Miss Kosova, I look at flowers. <laughs> um, what's so strange about that? Nick's a very kind, he's a sensitive man. I he know. loves flowers. I know, I know. You think Nick is very kind, very gentle. That is what you see. All right. If you don't want to help me, please, Mr. Cartwright, give me the name of someone who might. Just because a man likes flowers. I have proof. I cannot show it to you. It's on my body. In my country, it is not so unusual for a man to beat his wife. I am not talking about beating. I am talking about killing. Mrs. Kosova. It's more than just flowers. I know Nick. I live with him. I feel it. Every day, it's getting worse and worse. Mr. Cartwright, I am afraid. Do you really believe that Nick would harm you? Kill me! Or my son! Or both of us! Hey, don't you talk American? Me wish that I glad do you more. Hey, listen to that. Un toko chitire, me zetsa, me nismo i elenisha samo kronkir. What kind of talking is that? Beats me. Hey, why don't you shut up? Un toko chitire, me me zetsa. I said shut up. God, listen. What are you jawing about? No good, Turk. You wait. You wait. You see. Someday, someday we drive you from my country. Pull off. <laughs> hey, stop it.
What's this all about? Okay, Cherokee, what happened? You always blame me. Ask anybody. He hit me with a bottle. He's got that sod buster section. It comes from pushing a plow. Who started it? He did. Call me a no good Turk. I'm a good American. He did hit him with a bottle. Half full, too. You better lock him up, Clem. He's wild. I'm going to do better than that. You help Dave bring him over to the jail. I'm going to lock you all up. I work hard all my life. I work hard. I know what you try to. You try to take some away. My answer is true, yes, no? Luck. There's luck, demons, witches, evil spirits I learned from my grandmother. I look at flowers. So pretty. I love you, Anna. No, Anna. No, Anna. No! No! Leave me out! Will you be quiet and go back to bed? Ain't no sign of nowhere, Paul. She sure made a mess in yeah. The fire could have been started by a spark from the stove. Or a kerosene lamp falling over. Yeah, or it could have been started by Nick. Well, that would explain why Mrs. Kosova and the boy aren't here, but I should find it hard to believe that a man would try to burn up his wife and son. I... That leaves her, then. Set a fire just to discredit her husband. It's happened before, Paul. On my way to Carterville, I'll drop by that Serbian community and ask a few questions about Nick and Anna. Why don't you drop by here later this afternoon? I'll do it. See you later. Please, please get up. I can't carry you. Just a little further. Come. Where are we going? To a friend. Where's Papa? I don't know. I want Papa. Harry. What are you doing here? You obey. You obey. Now, Mr. Sova, there's no need for that. He'll get himself killed. What? I told you. He tried to kill us. He tried to burn down the house. Who tried to kill us? Now, look, Mr. Still, you don't believe me. Well, uh, well, why, why don't you jump up on the buckboard and we'll talk about it? Come on. No. I want to ride. No. Mr. Cartwright doesn't really want to help us. Are you going to see your friends? Yes. They will believe me. Well, just take a look at your boy. He's tired. Uh, think of him for a change. All right, for a little while. Come on. That's it. Let's give your mother some room here. Mrs. Kosova. You might as well ride along with us. It'll be faster that way. No. Well, then put your bundles back at the buckboard here. Up so you'll make a good impression on the judge. 
All right, let's go, one at a time. What's the matter, Cherokee? Got the whips and jangles? It comes with no surprise. Well, morning, Glory, I guess you get to go first. This bucket's for washing the soaps in the bottom. Let's go, you two, move! Meet me in course, Dave, whenever they're ready. Sure thing. Hey, who's the judge? Jack Chadney, same as last time you two were here. Oh, 30 days or $30. And me with 30 cents. You're clean enough. Hey, they'll hang you. They sure will. Stopping. Get something to eat. Then Shandor and I go on alone. You're not going anywhere until we've eaten. Shandor, let's see what Hop Singh has for us in this basket, huh? There we go. There we are. Miss Kosovo, won't you join us? How can you talk of eating? When our lives are in danger. Shandor, I bet you anything that there's a sandwich in here specially for you. Here you are. You take that and eat it over there by that wagon. And you stay there. You hear me? You think I'm foolish because I want my son where I can see him? I think you're letting your fears run away with you. You still believe my fears are nothing. Fire! That is nothing? I started that myself? I didn't say that. Oh, I am a stupid, ignorant woman. But I know what people think. You like Nick. You don't like me. But still, couldn't I be telling the truth? Of course. I am not frightened for myself. My life is over. I am frightened for my son. He must live. He will live. And so will you. I have a sandwich. I am not hungry. Now, a man just doesn't go crazy all of a sudden. I know. Now, how long have you known? Maybe since before we were married. Before? Then why did you marry him? Nick was strong, good-looking. He always did funny things. One day he stole a, a lamb that the Turks were preparing for a feast. And when they came after him, he, he rode the pots and pans down the hill. Did your parents approve of this marriage? Never. Nick kidnapped me. Yes, it was a custom in my country. I was glad. I loved him. Hmm. Well, seems to me that you were both young and vital and reckless. And... Yes, I was a different woman then. But Nick, he was always in trouble. One day, the Turkish mayor hit him over the head with a cane. Why? He was against the taxes. Life is hard for a peasant in my country. We go now, yes? Yes. Right. Plenty of time. He's been here. Horses have been running for over a mile. They need some rest. I told you, Nick is here. Here or two miles back. I haven't seen a soul. Now look, Mrs. Kosova, you may be right about your fears, but that doesn't give you the right to whip my team. To you, this is just another outing, another trip to Cartersville. Well, yes, it is. I haven't seen anybody. Now, is this another one of your feedings, or is it based on something a little more substantial? No, it's the flowers in the road. Didn't you see them? 
Well, ma'am, there are flowers all over this place. Before we were married, in our village, Nick and I were not allowed to speak to each other. He would come down to the well to watch me, or he'd come to the stream to watch me wash clothes. And often, he would leave flowers in the place where he thought I was going to be. Well, the flowers he used for... Whoever it was was shooting at me. It was Nick. No. Uh, I'd have to see him before I could say it's Nick. But I can say it. Let me stay here with him. You take, take Shandor. No. Look, it doesn't matter. Stay here. Is that you? You and I have no quarrel. Stop shooting and let's talk. He's gonna kill him. No, he's only trying to save our lives. Papa wouldn't hurt me. He wouldn't hurt anybody. I won't let him shoot Papa. I won't. No, no stay down. You want Papa to die? You put a curse on him. <laughs> I heard the horse running. Yeah, he rode out. And he will come back. How far is the literary place from here? About four miles? Yes, I think so. And the rest of the settlement? It's north. The nearest house is about two miles. All right, let's get moving. Come on, Shandor. Shandor. I got to know somebody to hurt. Hey, Clint, come on. Hello, Joe. Hello, oh, Oz. Oh. Howdy, Clem. You want some chicken? No, no thanks. You far around? No, he's on his way to Carterville. I'll tell you this morning. Got some coffee? No. 
I'm looking for a tenant, Nick Casola. He tried to kill one of my deputies. Nick? That's right. Two witnesses saw him do it. He tried to break up the golden nugget. Almost killed a man to beat a drunk charge. He's got to be crazy. He must have set that fire. Yeah. Fire? What fire? Over to Casola's. Me and Paul went over there this morning. There'd been a fire in the kitchen. Did you talk to Mrs. Casola? No. She and the boy were gone. They were probably headed for that Serbian settlement over by Cotterville. Is Nick armed? Yes, he took a rifle and he's got a pocket full of ammunition. But you don't think he'd harm his family? Yeah. Joe, you and me better ride for Cotterville. Yeah. All right, good. I'll keep an eye on the Casola place. If he's not following Mrs. Casola, he'll probably come back there. Yeah. We'll see you later, ma'am. Bottom of the hill. Wait here. Sure, it's all clear. to know why it's janice a good friend since we come to america see the man you were coming to see yes such a good friend how many people live in that house just janice he live alone since his wife died
clear the window. Chandler, you feel any better? No. Neither do I. Mr. Cartwright, I have decided. You and Shandor must get to the settlement. Now look, I couldn't possibly get that far with this bullet in my leg. What's on your mind? Perhaps if he killed me, his anger will be stopped. something out. What? What will we figure out? He's out there. He's waiting. what he's doing. Papa is sick. Why is he sick? You remember when I tell you about the old country long ago and why we come here? Because we are hungry? Well, we think that if we come to America and we work hard, we'll not be hungry anymore. But you do work hard. And so did Papa. We had bad luck. You mean curses? No, no. Not like you think. First there was the floods, and then no water, and then, then the locust. Remember? Yeah. I remember the locust. Your father was far away from his land, and from his people. And he felt alone and frightened. Papa was frightened? Shandor, even a very strong man could become frightened when, when problems become so big and he doesn't know what to do about them and he feels all alone and, and sometimes he, he becomes frustrated because he can't do anything about them. And he becomes angry. And sometimes he does the wrong things.
Looks like Pa caught up with him. Yeah. Anna? Anna? On the floor, both of you. Anna? Anna? Anna! Anna! Before we were married in our village, he would sometimes come to my father's house and call my name like that. Anna! Anna!
find them? Yeah. They're a real nice family, old friend of the Kosovas. Yeah? You're more than happy to take them in. Great, great. You see, Hoss has the team all hitched up. Everything's all set. Climb aboard, John Nor. Good, good. Well, Miss Kosova, I guess it's time we... Mr. Cartwright, I, I want to thank you. I know that I have been very difficult, strange. But for a long time, I have felt so frozen, afraid to feel. Well, I was kind of slow myself, figuring things out. It's my fault, the way I am. It's very hard for me to tell you how grateful I am for our lives and for your friendship. I wish there was something that I could do for you. Well, you, uh, you make a new life for yourself and for Shandor with your old friends. I will try. For a long time, I have felt so afraid. Now there is no reason to feel afraid. I have been remembering Nick as he was long ago in our village. I loved him then. You keep thinking of him that way. Andor, take care of your mother now. See you, Paul. See you. <laughs> We're going to settle up right here and now. Mr. Callahan. What? You beat him fair and square, didn't you? Yeah. And there's no getting around it. You owe me. For the last time, let me be. My nose is busted. No, it ain't. Just bend a little bit. Why don't you boys settle up and stop grumping at one another? I mean it, Ed. I'm going to tell everybody in Virginia City what a Welsher you are. Don't you do that. I will. You won't be able to hold your head up in that town. I'll make you trouble. Now, listen. A bet's a bet, and I want my money. You're taking advantage. Going to fix you, Dusty? Well, you're welcome to try. Fix you good? You can't do nothing to me. All right, all right, I'll give him the money back. That'll settle it. Well, I'm sorry, Dusty, but I've got to hold that for evidence. But Ed's lying. Well, maybe, but he gave me a signed statement that you took that money by force, robbed him. Dusty, did you pull a gun on him? Heck no. Well, did you hit him or nothing? No, sir. Well, was anybody with you over at Cross Creek? I mean, did anybody actually see Ed hand the money over to you? Callahan. Who's he? The fellow Ed had the prize fight with. He gives anybody 20 bucks that can stay three rounds with him. Oh, well, where's he now? He said he was headed for Gurney's Landing. Well, I'll go get him. You better be quick. Cart's going to start sitting on Wednesday. You want me to go with you? No, no, one man can do that. Be careful. Joe, I'm counting on you. Don't you worry. I have this Callahan back in plenty of time. Take it easy, Dusty. I'm looking for a fellow named Callahan. Mr. Callahan favored us with his presence for a brief spell this morning. Yes. Hey, well, uh, you know which way he went? I know where I hope and pray he went. But the last time I seen him, he was headed north. Thanks. Well, will you do me a favor? 
the minute you see him, pick up a rock. No, a two by four, a heavy two by four, and hit him with it. Do what I can. You best get him from behind. He's pretty high spirited. Started. I'll take about 20 of that. You're on, Shorty. Lay it right down there. Uh, excuse excuse me, man. I'll cover anything up to 1,000, friend. No, no, no bets. Uh, is there a fellow named Callahan around? Yeah, but not for long. <laughs> <laughs> My boy Shad here is about to destroy him. I'm going to pound him right down into the ground. Yeah, it's time to get going. Hey, Come on. Hey, uh, when are you going to pound him into the ground? Right now. <laughs> I don't care. Much we took in 1675. You'll have to cut the prize back to $15. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, well, this uh, fellow Myers, he's a tall, uh, heavy set. Well, they generally are. Yeah, well, he, he had a side bet with a friend of mine named Dusty Rhodes. Yeah, well, there's always a lot of betting going on. 1675. I knew this was a hungry town. Yeah, but you remember this is a hundred dollar bet. What's that? It's old Bob here. He's strictly a one man dog. Sorry. Yeah, well, uh, see, Dust Dusty said you were there when Myers paid him off. Something like that comes to mind. You know who your old buddy is, don't you? Uh, Mr. Mr. Callahan, that dog important. might have taken your arm right off. Callahan, will you please pay attention to this gentleman? Uh, my friend Dusty's in jail, and he needs you to testify so he can get out. Oh, that's too bad. Sounds like Otto's dying out there. Better go with him. Look, like I said my friend's in jail. No. Oh, he... It can be rather difficult. Come on, 
Thursday. Gonna get around to the fight. because Mr. Myers didn't come to for 10 or 15 minutes. Then he got into a fight about money with another gentleman. That, that's your Mr. Rhodes, I imagine. Yeah. You know, what, what happened then? Then I excused myself. They were starting to use strong language. Sorry. Was anybody else there? Well, just Callahan. Does that help you at all? For sure, Callahan's the one I need. What about the fight, Callahan? Or can I have the next day? Hey, hold, hold it, hold it here. I heard something. Are you boys here? I said, let's get on with the fight. There it is again. Otto, you said you got all the jackasses out of here. I'll show you who's a jackass. Well, you don't have to. I can see. Does <laughs> your mother know where you are? Leave my mother out of this. Oh, well, somebody's got to come here and pick up your remains. <laughs> Why don't you sit down? You get your box of this and clean it up. The likes of which you have never seen in your lives. Yeah! Yeah! Now, now, gentlemen, for this demonstration, I need two strong men. Come on, next. Well, I have a couple of volunteers here. Come on now, how, how about you? Come on, step up here. What are you boys over there? Would you like to come watch my performance? Oh, you bet. I wouldn't miss for the world. I'm sorry, I can't talk anymore. I've got to get in the mood for my performance. The one and only Enjoy! All right, now let's have a little quiet, boys. A little quiet for a great artist. All right, dig your heels in, boys. Dig them in there. All right, you ready, Angeline? Well, <laughs> I 
bet you never saw anything like that before. Oh, that, that's the honest to goodness truth I never did. <laughs> I don't mean to sound over proud, but I'm about the best there is. Yeah, well, I, I, I can see that. <laughs> oh, no, this wasn't one of my best performances. I'm a lot better when I have a big audience. <laughs> Hey, look, hey, look, if you just want to back to Virginia City with me... Well, that sounds seat. like a lot of bother to me. When well, now, Calhoun, you were there. But well, he's a grown done. man. He ought to be able to take care of himself. What am I, some kind of wet nurse or something? Hi, right, gents! That's what you came here for. Somebody help get that poor specimen on his feet and into the ring. I'll give him $20 if he can last three rounds with me. <laughs> What'll happen to your friend? He may go to prison. I guess I did catch Callahan at a bad time. Oh, I don't believe there is a good time to catch Callahan. All right, he's your man. Fifty bucks, he doesn't go the distance. You got a bet. All right, Otto. <laughs> Take some money out of this town after all. Mr. Callahan, I, I know this is probably a bad time. But... Sure is. Five and we'll call it square. Five? Well, look, Marshal, now it's gonna cost this city to feed me. Oh, I'm a big eater. 
Then there's my team over the livery stable, and if they don't get good oats regular, they're going to kick that place apart. And then there's, uh, well, we just be more trouble than we're worried, Marshal. Well, that's the unvarnished truth. All right, uh, $15 fine. Wants to make it 10, we got to eat. And you got ten minutes exactly to get out of town. Oh, no, wait a minute, Marsh. I mean, that's I mean, not I fair. can't load my wagon that fast. We gotta eat. We? Where do you get this we? Who said anything about you going to eat? Well, I was gonna talk to you for a few minutes. This man is a breathing disaster. He weren't in town 15 minutes, and he practically ruined one of our town's leading citizens. No, it weren't nothing but a little scuffle, that's all. A scuffle? Now, the victim, he don't think so. He's all laid up in bed. His spine's all throwed out, and the doctor's got his jaw stropped shut. And then, then he tries to pick a fight with Shad. Well, I ain't going to start any more trouble. Uh, Marshal, if you'd seen this young lady's performance, she, she really knocks herself out. She's got to be hungry. <sighs> all right. It's getting my better judgment, but... You got... Two hours and to get out of town. Just exactly two hours, and I'm going to hold you personally responsible. Thank you. I like to fight somebody as soon as I hit town. See, it makes the locals mad. Then they go trying to find somebody to beat me, like Shad. Then you bet on yourself, huh? Well, of course, that's who's going to win. All right, beer and steak's all on, Harry. It's kind of like advertising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, look who's here. You don't care who comes in, do you? Don't pay any attention to him. Just take it. Yeah, that way I work up a crowd. What sort of woman goes around busting barrels with her head, huh? Well, I'll tell you what sort. Very unnatural. It rattles the brain, unsettles the reason. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't mind if we don't do the gentlemanly thing and go over there and get ourselves in a lot of trouble we don't need. I understand perfectly. And for once in your life, will you act like a responsible human being? A man's dependent on you. Well, that's true. I'm obligated. Besides, oh, they're just jealous. And when you're the best, you have to expect talk like that. That's very true. How'd you ever get started, anyway? Yeah, I often wondered that myself. Well, uh, it started way back like when I was about seven or eight years old. I had these three older <laughs> brothers that used to tease me something that ain't awful. No kind of a and man. Uh, whenever I try to get even with them, uh, they just cut me off at all and laugh. No, no. But one day, Steve, I was brother, a brother, a suit of red underwear, and all of a sudden, I had the power, like a gift. Huh. Hey, Bob, whatever happened to Steve? Oh, well, he come to in about four or five hours. I'm, I'm very careful now. I never use my talent in anger. No, I, I can understand why. Can you understand why? I'll bet if you filmed her head, you'd find it all covered with knots and bumps. Yeah. <laughs> all right, now, come on, man, can only stand so much of this. All right, all right. You stay here. I give you my word. I won't raise a hand to make any trouble. Your word. My word. Hello, boys. Say, uh, I just thought I'd tell you, you know, the things you say in the lady over there can hear. Well, I... Well, she's a real artist, you know. I mean, real sensitive. You might hurt her feelings. I know you wouldn't want to do that. Well, now... We, uh, we meant no harm. Then you'll hold it down, huh? Fine, and no hard feelings. Here, we'll shake on it. Oh, uh, I'm sorry about that. Here you are. You know, I think that's a mistake.
just behind us, ain't it? That's right, about a mile, but that ain't quite far enough. You just keep right on going. I'm just trying to figure out which way to go. Well, you can go that away or that away, but just go. We're going this way to Virginia City. I've been there. Didn't make a dime. Why should I go back? Mr. Cartwright's friend is in jail. Mr. Broad mad. He could take care of himself. Besides, I ain't eager to help a man who cost me 150 bucks. 150 what? 150 bucks. If you'd have rung that bell like anybody with a teaspoonful of brains would when Chad hit the deck, I'd have won 150 bucks. Yeah, well, the round wasn't over. Well, it's close enough. I would have rung the bell. Hey, well, look, where do you get off betting 150 bucks when you only got 16? Well, that's my business. Besides, my dog's gone. If you hadn't got me hustled off to the marshal's office, I wouldn't have lost him. So long, neighbor. Sorry I can't help you. Come on. <laughs> your music. I smell the coffee. Fresh made coffee? I figure y'all will do it in a minute. How'd the fight come out? <laughs> it didn't. Thought you were going to Virginia City. Oh, no. I'm not going back till you go with me. Well, you'll be tripping over your beard before that happens. Look, all hey, I'm Hey, Otto, did you see my dog? Oh, Bob? I ain't seen him. I thought he was with you. Uh, what are you talking about a dog you for? Mr. Cartwright's friend is in trouble. It's your duty to get him out. I wonder well, what he's happened to dog. I heard something. You know that time we passed through Gurney's Landing? Yeah. Payday up there tomorrow. Be 40 or 50 miles running around with nothing but pure money in the pocket. And we'll be up there taking it from yeah, you. Well, well, you well, well, <laughs> Might even be able to pay you your back wages. Look, all I'm asking Look, you if to you're going to be that. here, why don't you make yourself useful? I mean, you can unhitch a team, chop some wood. What? Then we'll talk about Virginia City. Look, my friend needs a well, little if help. If you want it's... me to do something for you, then you do something for me. Right here a minute ago. About five minutes ago. Mr. Callahan borrowed your horse. Let's take a little ride. A ride where? Back to town. He went after his dog. Oh, <laughs> 
seen trouble, my share and some to spare. It was $150 and my dog falls in love. None of them kind of things happen until you come along. Not to mention getting run out of town. Exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, now, you've been run out of town before. Twice in the same day, never. never. You're just bad luck, that's what you are. Uh, just like you were for Dusty. <laughs> you know you got a one-track mind. Every other breath, you keep plaguing me with that Dusty. No, you can put a stop to it. Just come back to Virginia City and testify for him. With them payday miners down the road, their pockets bulging with money they want to get rid of, that'd be just plain foolish. We charge 50 cents admission this time. That'll give us some good betting money. We're going to make it big. Don't you know it. <laughs> I want you ringing that bell. Any minute. Count of hands are gonna catch him and squash him. Third round. He hadn't done it yet. I gotta admit that caught wrench kind of quick. Come on, Count of Hand.
million dollars. It's no good. What do you mean it's no good? That's what I said. It's no good. Well, what do you want? A mortgage on the wagon? No. A team? Uh-uh. A harness? <laughs> oh, no. This belongs to me personal. Well, what do you want, blood? No, I want you to go back to Virginia City and testify for Dusty. I can't do that. That's another town I got run out of. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. We'll have one more fight. Come on, three rounds for $20? You can't pay me now. No, 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 no. This time we'll go all the way. No rounds. Oh, they'll be kicking, biting, stomping, pinching, but no fancy dance. We'll go all the way till one of us can't get up. For what? You win, I'll go to Virginia City with you. I win, you stop bothering me. All right, Mr. Callahan, you got a deal. What you waiting for, a bell? I said no rounds. You did, Callahan, so you did.
Sheriff sent that telegram? Said he did. Well, in case he didn't, we best think of some way to get out of here. I prefer not to talk to you, Mr. Callahan. You have my profound sympathy, Mr. Cartwright, being cooped up with that, that deceitful and contrary man. Me? Deceitful? If you wanted him to come to Virginia City, you should have told him never to set foot in the place. He'd have been there like a shot. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad you're not talking to me. You know, it's a, I wouldn't count on that telegram too much. When you're in trouble, it's a mistake to count on anybody else. That's my experience. You've had a lot of experience. Yeah, what you got to do is you got to you gotta draw on your own resources. You know, there's a trick I've used a time or two that ought to get us out of here. Oh, yeah? Okay, see, I curl up on the bunk here, see, and I moan and groan, and, and you holler for the sheriff, tell him I'm sick, see? And when he comes in here, I hit him. No. All right, then you can hit him. It won't work. Mm. Hasn't yet, I gotta admit that. Still, if you keep at these things long enough... Forget it. Howdy, Sheriff. We're just uh, talking, you know, passing the time. Act casual. <laughs> You know the sad part, don't you? Well, we gotta do it all over again. Do what over again? The fight. You and me had a gentleman's agreement. A fight to the finish. We didn't finish. There's no decision. Oh, well, we gotta do it all over again. Well, fine, we'll do it all over again. I figure we'll go down the road and find us about 80 acres of nice, clear land and get her done. If and when we get out of here. You know, when the sheriff feeds us, we can snatch us a spoon and start digging a tunnel. A spoon? That'd take four years. Take longer than that. This here jail's built on solid rock. You got bailed up. Good. Hey, what about me? We. Both of you. The man only wanted Cartwright. I told him all of you or nobody. And come up with the money. Well, now we can get her done. Well, I'll tell you, I'm glad to see you here. Hi, Joe. What, what, what are you doing here? I come to bail you out. Your pa sent me. And I got to tell you, he's not a bit pleased. Yeah, well, you, you, you're in jail. Oh, that. Well, oh, I admire Simmer down. He come in and told the sheriff the truth. When? Oh, about a week ago. You don't look so good, you know that? I'm sorry you went to all that trouble. No hard feelings. <laughs> no, it's not an honest mistake. That's Dustin. <laughs> It's dusty. If you're looking for the little lady, she went over to the hotel. Thanks. Thanks. You don't look too good either. Oh, it's mice. That sure is a pretty lady. What's her name? Angeline. Mighty pretty little thing. She's going over to get her bag. I thought maybe I'd step over there and give her a hand. She dropped her scarf. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, I'll take it over to her. No, no, don't bother. We will take it over. Don't worry about it. Oh, no trouble at all. Are uh, you you're sure? Be a pleasure. He's a sweet boy. Oh, 
Oh, Miss Angeline, you dropped your scarf. a beer. Cartwright, I'll drink it. Hey, you know, if you ever get to Virginia City, I'd really like you to meet my brother Horace. 